Chapters 38 and 39 of An American Robinson Crusoe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Allison Hester of Athens, Georgia. An American Robinson Crusoe by Samuel B. Allison. Chapter 38 Another Shipwreck one evening robinson sat in his shelter thinking of his plans to escape to friday's country he was sad for after all this place was very dear to him it was the only home he had had he not made everything with his own hands it was doubly dear to him on this account he thought how it would grieve him to leave his goats his fields and the many comforts he had here he had been telling friday of his home in new york he told him of the great city and of its many wonderful sights. He told him of his country and his people, of his flag and its history. All these things brought back memories of his boyhood, and he wondered what changes had come in his long absence. Friday, with wonderful intelligence, listened to all Robinson told him. He was delighted in hearing Robinson tell of the wonders of the great world, for he had never known anything about it as they talked robinson noticed the approach of a storm the sky was getting black with clouds the winds were blowing a hurricane the waves were coming in mountain high it reminded him of the eventful night now twenty-five years ago when his ship was tossed up on the shore like an eggshell and broken to pieces suddenly there was a sound that made robinson start from his seat with the wildest alarm was it the sound of a cannon from the ocean, or the terrible crash and roar of the water on the rocks of the coast? There it is again. It is a cannon. Some ship is in distress. This is its signal. Robinson ran out and down to the shore with Friday at his heels. Oh, master, said Friday, can we not help? If they only knew the island was here, and how to steer into the harbor beyond the point of land on the south robinson was so excited that he scarcely knew what he was doing he ran up and down the shore calling wildly but the awful roar of the sea and wind drowned his cries suddenly his thoughts came back to him quick friday get some fire into a pot we will run to the point gather grass and wood and make a fire there maybe we can guide them into the harbor they soon had a great beacon light, sending its welcome, greeting far over the sea. The pilot of the ship saw it, and steered his ship nearer and nearer. Robinson was ready to shout for joy as the ship seemed about to make the harbor. The ship had her sails torn in shreds, and her rudder broken. It was hard to steer her in such a gale. On rounding the point, she was blown on the rocks with a frightful crash which could be heard above the din of the storm she struck and held fast robinson could hear the cries of the men and the orders of the officers they were trying to get boats ready to be put off but such was the confusion of the storm and the enormous waves breaking over the deck that it could not be done quickly before the men could get a boat into the sea and get into it the ship gave a lurch to one side as though about to sink all the men jumped for one boat it was overburdened the wind tossed it about the sea soon filled it and went down and all were lost robinson and friday remained on the shore all night they watched to see if they could not help some poor sailor that might cling to a plank and be blown on shore they saw no one at last they lay down but they could not sleep many times they sprang up and ran about for fear that some poor fellow would need their help at last morning came the storm ceased robinson and friday searched everywhere for the bodies of sailors but could find none but the wind had blown the ship in plain view and into shallow waters it was lying on the bottom with more than half its bulk out of the water the masts were gone. It was a sad sight. No human being could be seen on it. They were now rejoiced that they had their boat ready. Let us take it, said Robinson, and go out to the ship. It may be some person is still on the unfortunate ship. 
they were soon by the ship's side they rowed around it until they saw a rope hanging down from the deck robinson seized this and clambered up friday tied the boat fast and followed robinson opened the door leading from the deck into the ship and went down he searched in all the cabins and knocked at all the doors he called but all was still when he was satisfied that every person on board had been drowned he wept bitterly friday stood there with open and staring eyes he looked and looked he was astonished at the large ship and at the wonderful things before him they were in the cabin where the passengers had been there stood trunks under the benches and clothes hung on the hooks on the wall one trunk was open in it were telescopes through which the travelers had looked at the land robinson also saw paper pens pen holders and ink books were also nearby robinson first took a thick book it was the bible out of which his mother had so often taught him then they came to the sailor's cabin there hung muskets and swords and bags of shot and cartridges then they went to the workroom there were saws hammers spades shovels chisels nails bottles and pails knives and forks and something more over which robinson was most glad matches at last they came into the storeroom there lay bags of flour and barley teas lentils beans and sugar then robinson embraced friday in his great joy and said to him how rich we are End of chapter 38 another shipwreck chapter 39 saving things from the ship after robinson had looked through the ship he began to plan the way to get the tools and things he most wanted on shore he and friday first carried everything together that he wanted to take on shore when they had done this he found he had the following things robinson stood everything together that he needed the most one a case of nails and screws two two iron axes and several hatchets three a saw four a small case of planes tongs augers files chisels etc five a third case with iron brackets hooks hinges etc six a case of matches seven a barrel of gunpowder eight two muskets and a pistol nine several swords ten a bag of cartridges eleven a large sail cloth and some rope twelve a telescope by means of the ship's ropes robinson let everything down into his boat he himself took the bible and then they rowed to the shore and unloaded the boat everything was put into the bower where rain could not harm it by the time they had this done night was coming on and they decided to do no more that day but wait until the next day we must work fast said robinson the first storm is likely to break the ship in pieces and destroy everything in it the next morning early they ate a hastily prepared breakfast and were off to the boat neither robinson nor friday stopped for their noonday lunch a storm is brewing said robinson the air is calm the sky is overcast with clouds and the heat is oppressive we must hurry with the utmost diligence they rowed back and forth all day they made nine trips they had now on shore a surprising quantity of all kinds of tools goods and weapons they had all kinds of ware to use in the kitchen clothes and food robinson prized a little four-wheeled wagon and a whetstone but in looking over his stores robinson suddenly discovered that he had no needles or thread they went at once to procure these important articles in looking for needles and thread robinson found a small trunk full of money and valuable stones there were diamonds rubies pearls and much gold robinson pushed it to one side what can i do with riches on this island i would give them all for some needles and thread he said to friday but on second thought he took the trunk and its contents along with him to his cave for in the trunk were also letters and writings perhaps he said these tell to whom the valuables belong and i can return them some time 
robinson at last found a case containing everything one could need with which to cut and sew cloth there were scissors thread needles thimbles tapes and buttons but now the wind was rising and they must hurry they were nearly ready for departure they were passing through a part of the ship not before visited they were surprised to hear a sound coming from a room whose door was kept shut by a heap of stuff that had been thrown against it by the violent pitching of the ship in the storm robinson and friday cleared away the rubbish and were surprised to find a dog almost drowned he was so weak from want of food that his cries could be heard a short distance only robinson took him tenderly in his arms and carried him into the boat while friday carried the sewing case and trunk the wind was now blowing a gale a few yards from the ship they were in great danger robinson grasped the rudder and made friday stand ready to cut away the mast in case they found the wind too strong with the greatest difficulty they finally made the little cove at the mouth of the creek and were soon landed with their precious cargo the next morning they eagerly searched the waters for the ship not even their field glasses could reveal anything of it some planks a mast and parts of a small boat were blown on shore all else had disappeared robinson set to work at once to make a door for his bower out of the pine wood cast up by the waves how easy the work proceeded with saws hammers augers squares planes nails hinges and screws with the wagon too friday could now gather his corn quickly and easily or haul in great quantity of grapes to dry for raisins friday had never seen a gun he did not know the use of firearms the muskets that robinson had brought from the ship were a great mystery to him robinson showed him their use he showed how they could defend themselves he told friday that these weapons could kill at a distance he took some powder and touched a match to it friday was greatly frightened robinson then proceeded to load the gun he put in some powder a ball of lead or bullet then at the hammer he placed a little cap which gave a flash when struck this ignited the powder when all was in readiness robinson bade friday to follow him they went slowly out into the forest along the stream soon robinson espied a rabbit sitting under a clump of grass robinson raised his gun took careful aim pressed the trigger there was a flash and a loud report and there lay the rabbit dead but friday too was lying on the ground he had fainted from astonishment and fright robinson dropped his gun and raised the poor fellow up to a sitting position he quickly recovered he ran to get the rabbit he examined it carefully robinson at last pointed out the hole the bullet had made and the mystery of the way the rabbit was killed was solved robinson had lived alone so long that he had learned to love every living creature on the island he never harmed anything except when he needed food he had lived so quietly that the birds and animals did not fear him they lived near his shelter and seemed to know him robinson was delighted with his new tools and weapons but they reminded him of home nothing that he had seen in all the time he had been on the island so turned his thoughts toward home and friends robinson would sit for hours thinking of the past and making plans for the future he was homesick end of chapter thirty nine saving things from the ship chapter forty the return of the savages robinson now renewed his plans for escaping from the island to friday's country they first rebuilt their boat with their new tools they hollowed out the center till the sides were thin toward the top they shaped her sides and keel they made her prow sharp so that she would cut the water easily they made a new mast strong and tall and shapely they made larger and stronger sails and ropes they made two pairs of extra oars they made boxes and cupboards in the prow and stern for keeping their fresh water and provisions friday's eyes sparkled with joy when it was done he hoped he would now be able to return to his own island and parents robinson noticed his joy and asked him do you want to return to your own people 
yes said friday very much would you trust yourself in this boat yes said friday very well said his master you may have it and start home when you please yes master but you come too my people will not hurt you robinson resolved to venture over to friday's land with him but before their preparations were complete the rainy season of our fall set in they resolved to wait until the weather was settled and as soon as the rainy season was over to set out they ran their boat well up into the creek and covered it over with a large tarpaulin made of sailcloth obtained from the ship robinson had now been on the island twenty-seven years for the last three years he had lived happily with his companion friday every year in september robinson celebrated the day his life was saved and he was thrown up on the island robinson celebrated it this year with more than the usual thankfulness he thought that it would be his last anniversary on the island one morning friday had gone to the beach to find a turtle soon he came running back out of breath oh master he cried they are coming they are coming to take me prisoner he was trembling with fright we must take our guns and defend ourselves said robinson but we will not kill any one unless they attack us this quieted friday they loaded four muskets and three pistols robinson put the pistols in his belt where he also fastened a sword he gave friday a pistol and a musket for friday had learned to shoot well besides friday carried a bag of powder and bullets robinson took his field glasses and saw twenty-one savages with two prisoners the prisoners were bound and lying on the ground this was a war party celebrating a victory with a feast they probably intended to kill their prisoners we must save the lives of those men said robinson the savages this time had landed quite near robinson's shelter not more than half a mile below the creek's mouth soon he and friday started off robinson commanded friday to follow quietly and not to speak or shoot we will surprise them and give them a good scare said robinson when yet a considerable distance away they could hear the savages yelling and screaming some of them were dancing their war dance their faces and bodies were painted to make them look terrible to their enemies they were dancing around their prisoners with hideous cries and gestures they could now see the prisoners plainly one had a beard and was plainly a white man robinson was surprised and determined to save him at all risks get your gun ready to fire he said to friday and when i say the word let us run forward yelling and firing our guns over their heads this will fill them with such fright that they will take to their heels and boats and get away as soon as possible in the scramble and confusion we will rush in and rescue the prisoners this plan did not please friday at all his savage blood was up and he wanted to kill all he could let's fire on em he said let's kill all but the prisoners no no said robinson it's always wrong to take life unless it cannot be avoided to save one's own let's try my plan first with great reluctance friday consented at a signal from robinson they rushed forward and when in plain sight they fired off their muskets in the air if the ground had suddenly exploded beneath their feet there could have been no more confusion astonishment and fright a few took to their heels others lay as if dead they had swooned from fright but as robinson came up they jumped to their feet and pushed into the boats leaving the prisoners behind robinson and friday still rushed forward and fired their remaining loaded guns and pistols in the air the savages made all haste to get into their boats and push off soon they were well out to sea paddling rapidly for the west robinson reloaded his arms and gave them a farewell volley but not a soul was killed or even wounded this gave robinson great pleasure he had accomplished his purpose without bloodshed they could now turn to the prisoners robinson ran back to them and quickly cut their ropes robinson asked the white man who he was but the man was too weak to answer robinson gave him a piece of bread the fear of death being removed the white man soon grew stronger 
when friday came running back from watching the boats and saw the savage that had been a prisoner he gave a loud yell he threw his arms around the man kissed him and laughed and cried for joy he put his head on his breast and hugged him again and again robinson was greatly surprised and puzzled he asked friday what his actions meant but so intent was friday that he got no answer at last friday recovered far enough from his great joy to say with his face beaming in delight oh master this man is my dear father they at once began a long conversation each one told his story suddenly friday jumped up and said how foolish i am i have not thought to give my father anything to eat or drink he must be nearly starved and away he ran toward the shelter and was soon back with food and water to drink robinson learned through friday from his father that the white man was a spaniard that he had been captured by the tribe that had a battle with friday's people the Spaniard was one of sixteen men that had been saved by Friday's people from a wrecked ship. So weak were the prisoners that they could not walk to the shelter. Robinson and Friday made a litter and carried them one after the other. When once there, Friday prepared some rich rice soup. The prisoners ate heartily and in a few days were strong enough to go about the island. End of chapter 40, The Return of the Savages